There are six speakers in a debate and each of them will present a speech. The length of your speech will vary depending on what grade you are in, ranging from grade 5 students speaking for 4 minutes up to 8 minutes for grade 12 students. During your speech, you will be given a 1 minute warning bell, 2 bells when you reach time, and 3 bells 30 seconds after your time expires to let you know you are now over time. After the 3 overtime bells, the adjudicator will stop listening to your speech, so it is best to finish the sentence you are on and conclude. There are three speakers on each team who all have a different and very important role to play. This video will focus on the key aspects that every speech has in common. The introduction, body and conclusion. At the beginning of your speech, it is important to catch the audience's attention and set the right tone. To start your speech off well, make sure that you speak confidently and with plenty of eye contact. It is also important to keep your introduction concise to leave plenty of time for the body of the speech. For this reason, the introduction of your speech is the one component which you should script word for word. You do not need to introduce yourself by name in your speech. There are many ways to present an introduction, three of which include a rhetorical introduction, ethos attack and debate overview. The word rhetoric refers to the art of speaking or writing persuasively. Taking a rhetorical approach to introduction means using strong and emotive language to contextualise your speech and appeal to the audience. This type of introduction is particularly helpful if you would like to humanise an issue or contrast with the more logic focused elements of your speech. As you become more experienced in debating, you will likely hear about the second type of introduction, an ethos attack. The word ethos refers to ethics or credibility. An ethos attack is one where you take a core argument made by the opposition that is either factually or logically incorrect and you point out the problem in that argument in order to undermine the credibility of their speech. Just remember that an ethos attack does not mean you can comment on how confident another speaker is, their choice of words or body language. Instead, you should only refer to the arguments they've made and not their personal characteristics. The third type of introduction is a debate overview style introduction. In this type of introduction, you briefly summarise the case made by the opposition and then, in one or two sentences, state why your team should win this debate or what you will prove in your speech. However, this is by no means a full list of the ways to complete an introduction. Generally, your introduction should make up approximately 10 to 20% of your speech. If you are the first speaker, you will need to spend some additional time setting up the debate. As the first affirmative speaker, you will need to define the topic. When defining the topic, you need to identify the key words in the topic and briefly explain them. For example, in the topic, we should ban pets, the key words are we, ban and pets. A definition for this topic might be that we, being the Australian government, should ban, to make illegal, the keeping of pets, which are domesticated animals such as cats, dogs and birds. As the first speaker of the negative team, it is your job to accept the definition of the topic if you agree, or, if you disagree, provide an alternative definition. As first speakers, you may also need to provide a model or criteria, which we will discuss in another video. Now, let's explore the body of your speech. The body of your speech is the most important component and will take up the majority of your time. In the body of your speech, you will address either rebuttal, substantive arguments, or both, depending on your speaker role. As the first affirmative speaker, the body of your speech will cover the two most important arguments on your side of the debate. As the first negative speaker, you will generally have two rebuttal points, which respond to the arguments made by the first affirmative speaker. After addressing those points, you will present the two most important arguments on your side of the debate. Although the first negative speaker does present rebuttal, they should aim to spend most of their time on substantive arguments and less on rebuttal. Second speakers also have two rebuttal points and two substantive arguments in their speech. At this point in the debate, you should aim to spend about 50% of your speech on rebuttal and 50% of your speech on new arguments. However, this is just a goal to work towards and speakers in grades five to nine will usually spend closer to 30% of their speech on rebuttal. Third speakers are mainly rebuttal speakers. 
which means they present no new arguments and only focus on responding to material that has been raised in the debate so far. Third speakers generally have three rebuttal points or themes that they address in their speech. If you have any questions about rebuttal, we recommend watching our video dedicated to rebuttal. The final element of your speech is the conclusion. The conclusion is how you wrap up your speech. Generally, a conclusion will consist of two major components. First, a summary, and secondly, closing remarks. In your summary, you briefly restate the two main points addressed in your speech, or as a third speaker, you briefly overview the four points raised by your team. While a summary can be helpful, it is in no way essential. So if you are running out of time in your speech, please cut this component. You should finish your speech on some final closing remarks. Much like your introduction, this element can benefit from emotive language or a brief summary of why your team should win the debate. You may also hear students finish their speech by saying, we are proud to propose or we are proud to oppose, and this is fine too. Even if you are short on time, it can be helpful to have a brief conclusion to signal to the adjudicator that your speech is over. When writing a conclusion, it is good to avoid using cliches or common quotations from famous people unless they are directly relevant as these are often not persuasive. Now that you understand the three main components of a speech, there is one more tool that will help you, signposting. Signposting is a helpful tool which lets the audience know where your speech is going. After your introduction, you should signpost your rebuttal by stating, I will address two flaws in your position's case, and then list them. After your rebuttal, you should signpost your main arguments by stating, I will present two points, first and second. When you move between each component of your speech, you should also signpost to remind the adjudicator what your argument is and signal that you have moved from one idea to another. Although signposting takes up time in your speech, it is well worth it, as without signposting, your audience will likely get lost in your ideas. Thank you for watching this QD YouTube video on debating speeches, where we covered introductions, the body of your speech, conclusions, and signposting. If you want to learn more, check out our other videos, go along to watch debates, or best of all, just give it a try. The QDU has many resources to help students, parents, coaches and adjudicators, available from our website www.qdu.org.au.